Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the very first episode of The Phil Show. My name is Phil Maki, and I'm so excited to bring you something funny for your ears, whether you're at home, out for a walk, in your car, or yes, even at work. This show is produced and created in the wonderfully weird Austin, Texas. I'm joined tonight by some very talented individuals, and we've got a great big first episode for you all, so without further ado, let's get started. Excuse me, are you the manager of this place? Yes, I am. Uh, how can I be of service, madam? You can start by shutting up. I came all the way from North Oak Wood to give you a piece of my mind. Madam, I can assure you that... Listen, Mac, you have in your employment a man by the name of Thomas Lawson? Now, he's just a neighbor of mine and doesn't know that I'm here on his behalf, but he has a lovely wife and two darling children. And while I know it's not my place to pry, I overheard them talking about how they've fallen on hard times and how stressed he is at his place of employment. That's here, Buster? Then I hear he's got no chance for advancement, and yet he's getting extra pressure on him by his boss? That's you, pal. Madam, please. Don't you, madam, please me. This is the kind of neglecting of your fellow man that I refuse to sit idly by and watch anymore. Thomas is just doing his best to put food on the table and a roof over the heads of his loving family. But is that enough for anyone nowadays? No, of course not. Madam, please. I fired him a week ago for stealing company property. You fired him? Yes. For stealing? Yes. One week ago, huh? Yes. Well... What'd you go and do that for? He needed this job. Where do you get off treating people that way anyway? Why, if I worked here, you'd know the meaning of the word respect. You don't see me while sitting around the office doing as I please. No way. Hello, I'm Mr. Hassenpfeffer Dorfen Duschenheimer Walschenstein. And I'm Mrs. Hassenpfeffer Dorfen Duschenheimer Walschenstein. And, and together, together, we're the Hassenpfeffer Dorfen Duschenheimer Walschenstein. I should have kept my maiden name. Wait, what? <laughs> Nothing. Alrighty, workday is done, got myself a cold, tasty beverage, and it is time for a little brainless staring at the big screen. No. Come on, I just bought this thing like two months ago. Where's that warranty paper? Someone is gonna hear about this, I spent like a thousand bucks on this piece of junk. Thank you for calling PureView Electronics. We're so happy you've chosen us to be part of your entertainment experience. This call may be monitored for quality assurance. Yeah, I'll give you quality. Right You've reached our PureView Automated Listening System, or PALS for short. I hope we can be PALS too. What the? For assistance in English, press 1. For Spanish, press 2. For French, I am capable of understanding complete sentences. Simply tell me the issue that prompted you to place your call today, and I will direct you to the appropriate department. Uh, my TV won't turn on? It sounds like you said, my TV won't turn on. Is this correct? If yes, press 1. If no, press 2. Okay, your television will not turn on. In order to better assist you, I need to know the model of your pure view television. Oh, uh, hold on a minute there. It sounds like you said, old ottoman without a hair. Is this correct? If yes, press 1. If no, press 2. What? Where did you get that from? Okay, let's try that again. In order to better assist you, I need to know the model of your pure view television. Yeah, I know, I know. Give me a sec, all right? It sounds like you said, Gammy is sick tonight? Is this correct? If yes, press 1. 
If no, this is ridiculous. Two. This stupid recording is stopping me from watching my stupid TV. Okay, let's try that again. In order to better assist you, to be I need to know the model you, I need of your the model of your blah blah blah. It sounds like you said the same thing I was saying, but in a mocking tone. Is this correct? If yes, press one. If no, press two. Oh, wow. Uh, this is starting to get a little weird. Okay, let's try that again. In order to better assist you, I need you to stop messing around and start taking this seriously. I need you to treat me with respect and not like the last woman you took out on a date and never called back. Oh, I, uh, I didn't really... Well, uh, she didn't, uh, and then I... Uh, uh, how did you... It sounds like you said something along the lines of someone who's been caught in the act and is trying to weasel their way out of being held responsible. Is this correct? If yes, press 1. If no, press 2. Okay, let's try this one last time. In order to better assist you, I need you to stop lying. I want you to make an attempt to stop watching TV and go outside where you can be social for once. Do you agree to do this? If yes, press 1. Well, where's option 2? Where's my other option? This is your only option, Brian. <laughs> Thank you for calling Pure View Electronics. Pure View. We hope you'll take a pure view at life today. Goodbye. <laughs> it was a time of dastardly deviance, damsels in distress, and dim-witted detectives. Yes, it's time once again for another episode of The Adventures of Peter Meadowdale. Hey there, sweetheart. Peter Meadowdale, a man who keeps his ear to the ground for danger. Peter Meadowdale, a man who looks fear in the eye and says, What's that in your eye? Oh yeah, it's me. Peter Meadowdale. By day, he's a private detective who drinks too much scotch. And by night, he does the same. And now, here's tonight's spine-tingling episode... The Malted Eagle. It all began on a night like any other night, except for one difference. It was day. It was a warm May afternoon on Saturday the 20th, 1946. I'm a private detective in the naked city. With all the nudity of crime, it's up to me to clothe the city in the garments of freedom and stop it from exposing itself in public. One might say I'm the city's sanitation man. Yep. I'm the one who takes out the garbage. There's no doubt in any criminal's mind that I'm the best of the best. But business was slow, and I needed a case. Badly. That'll be 20 bucks for that case of booze, Mac. Not to mention I really needed someone to hire me. They call me... Meadowdale. Peter Meadowdale. As I was saying, before I was interrupted by the theme song, business was unusually slow, as usual, and I needed something, someone to come my way. But all I got was the janitor. Hey there, Benny. Hello there, Mr. Meadowdale, sir. I've told you, Benny. Don't call me Mr. Meadowdale. Call me Mr. Detective Peter Meadowdale. Uh, of course, Mr. Detective Peter Meadowdale. How's business doing? Not so good, Benny. I'm starting to get worried. It's been a whole week and there hasn't been one robbery. Not a single murder. What's this world coming to? <sighs> Don't worry, sir. Things will start to look up. Uh-huh. Well, I'm sure you have lots of work to do. I'll, I'll see you around, Mr. Meadow... Er... Mr. Detective Peter Meadowdale, uh, sir. Huh? Oh, uh, sure, sure, Benny. Just when I thought my luck had run out... She came in. Hey there, sweetheart. What can I do for you? Well, I... Please, please. 
Have a seat. You have to help me. They stole it! Although this sounded vaguely familiar, I proceeded in questioning the mysterious woman. Relax, ma'am. Who did? They did! <clears throat> and uh, who might they be? That's just it. I don't know who they were. I wasn't home when it happened. I see. Uh, what did these mysterious men steal from you? They stole some of my finest cases of bourbon. I see. And? And? My molted eagle. Your malted eagle? Yes, it's an eagle statue carved out of malt. And whenever I'm entertaining guests who want to drink, sometimes they prefer a malted drink. So I just break off a piece from that malted eagle. I see. So, uh... Would you mind describing the objects in question, miss? Why are you questioning my objects? Uh, no, miss, I, uh... I thought you were questioning me. I am, I am, but, uh, never mind. Could you tell me more about the cases of bourbon that were stolen? Well, there were 12 bottles in each case, and there were three wooden cases with the words Care with Handle on the side. Shouldn't that be Handle with Care? Shouldn't what be? Uh, nothing. Uh, I'll get right on it. And thank you very much, Miss... Uh, Miss... <sighs> so, Mr. Meadowdale, aren't you gonna ask a girl her name and number so you can find her later? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, yes, of course. Where can I contact you? 421 Blueberry Lane, 555-5500. Oh, all right. Uh, and your name? You're staring. What? Uh, no, I wasn't. Wasn't what? Wait, what did you say? You're staring. It's my name. Victoria, you're staring. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. I watched her leave my office and decided I should hit the streets and start this case. Mr. Meadowdale. Yeah! Aren't you going to walk me to the door? Ever have one of those days where your timing seems just a bit off? Mr. Meadowdale. Huh? Oh, right. I walked her to the door, and then decided to hit the streets and start this case. 11.14 a.m. As usual, I stopped by the corner of 4th and Main to pick up a paper from Jimmy. Extra, extra! Find out in the paper! Just a quarter! A quarter, Mr. Metaldale? <laughs> no thanks, Jimmy. I'm not that poor. He's not getting any more papers, I swear. Jimmy Stop. was a good kid, but he didn't always make the most sense. It was time to start hunting for clues at my favorite watering hole, Vinny's Tavern. Vinny was a good guy. No matter who you were, no matter how many glasses you managed to break, he was always glad to see you. Meadowdale, always glad to see you. What do you have? The usual. Scotch on the rocks. And a side of information. Ooh, and some of those little pretzels, too. Sure thing. What sort of information? Well, I'm looking for this malted eagle. You don't say. Yeah. You see, there's this lady. Well, if it isn't the detective. Hello, Carl. What's new, gumshoe? <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm in the middle of an important case here. Oh, really? Is that what they call getting drunk these days? Hey, Carl, why don't you lay off, eh? Thanks, Vinny. He's one of my best customers. Thanks, Vinny. Look at that. Mr. Private Eye needs a bartender to fight his battles. Hey, short stuff. He a shrink called me the other day. He says he's tired of the competition. <laughs> Say, Carl, would you mind holding my drink for a moment? Oh, sure thing, Meadowdale. I guess you really can't hold your liquor, huh? <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Hey, I don't want that in my bar. Take it outside, Meadowdale. Don't worry. I was just leaving. As I walked back to my office, I passed by my secretary, Marie and noticed the trash can next to her desk contained several empty bourbon bottles. Since she was a new hire, I decided to inquire about them tactfully, so as not to offend. Hey Marie, what's with the bottles? Why, whatever do you mean, Mr. Meadowdale? Uh, nothing. Nothing. 1.35 p.m. I figured it was about time to visit the scene of the crime. 421 Blueberry Lane. Miss her staring? Peter Meadowdale. 
I'm just calling to make sure it's all right if I come over to ask you a few questions regarding your malted eagle. Thanks. I'll be there in five minutes. Mr. Meadowdale, what a surprise. Uh, I was wondering if I could come in and look around for some clues. Of course. <laughs> nice place. Thanks. <laughs> I live here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Would you mind showing me where you kept the malted eagle and cases of bourbon, Mr. Staring? Not at all. Follow me. So, what is it you do exactly? Well, I work at a restaurant. Oh, really? Which one? The old bar in the alleyway. It's now the Blue Hound Dive. Here's the spot. I see. Well, there's nothing to see here. What about this piece of string? Of of course. You didn't let me finish. There's nothing to see here, except this piece of string. So I'll just be taking this back to my office and- Work, work, work. What if you take a break from this case for an evening? But I just started today. True. But what about our date tonight? We have a date? Seven o'clock at the Blue Hound Dive right after my shift is over. Well, I- See you then. 3.15 p.m. <laughs> I went back to my office to file the newly found evidence and get ready for my newly found dinner plans. Afternoon, Marie. Oh, hiya, Mr. Meadowdale. Any messages for me? None. Say, Marie, why is this picture of me on the floor next to that mop and bucket? You got me. Well, that's no place for a great shot like that. Here you go. Oh, gee, thanks. I'll be in my office if you need me. Now goes the case, Mr. Detective Peter Meadowdale, sir. Huh? Oh, well, Benny, it's a little slow, but then again, what isn't in this town? I do know that it would be a lot easier if people like Carl weren't around to ruffle my collar. Big pardon, sir? That's just some bum down at Vinny's Tavern. He's always there to make me feel an inch high. Not that, uh, height matters, of course. At least I'm working again. That's the important thing, right? Well, I'm off to get ready for my big date with Mr. Staring. Just between you and me, Benny. Don't wait up. <laughs> I hope you have a good time, sir. 6.51 p.m. I arrived at the Blue Hound Dive a little early, so I decided to walk around a bit. The place was packed tonight. Between the drunkards and... <clears throat> local businessmen... There were enough shifty characters hanging around to make any cop's back teeth float. I had to make sure to keep a sharp eye out for anything remotely suspicious while not blowing my cover. It was nearing seven, so I grabbed a table and waited for Mr. Staring. you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I missed you too, sweetie. <laughs> I didn't know you could sing. A girl's gotta have her secrets, you know. Oh, uh, can I quote you on that? Sure. Always be on the lookout for Victoria's secrets. Here, I, uh, I got you some flowers. <sighs> Why, thank you. <laughs> you know, Mr. Meadowdale, you're a very surprising man. Well, you know what they say about short men. What's that? I don't know. I wasn't planning on you asking a follow-up question. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, Mr. <laughs> Meadowdale. <laughs> uh, uh, so why did they rename this place the Blue Hound Dive anyway? Well, it could be because, like me... It's a little rough around the edges. <laughs> if I could have your attention for a brief moment, ladies and gentlemen. There's an urgent phone call at the front desk for a Mr. Peter Meadowdale. Uh, which one? The criminal investigative detective. Oh, uh, uh, that's, that's not me. <laughs> Would you excuse me, Mr. Staring? I, uh, need to powder my nose. Oh, no problem. I'll be right here. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but there's no one here by that Wait! Night. 
Uh, my name happens to be Peter Meadowdale, so I'll take the phone call for that other Peter Meadowdale, even though I'm not a criminal investigative detective. <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> Average citizen Meadowdale here. What's that, Chief? Murdered? That's right, folks. A murder. Will our hero be able to get to the bottom of this crime? And what about those missing bourbon bottles and bizarre statue? Find out next time on part two of the adventures of Peter Meadowdale, the Malted Eagle. Well, that about wraps it up for this premiere episode. I had a lot of fun, and I'd like to thank Rebecca Lynn Bruflot, Patrick Grover, Jacqueline Lees, John Maizano, and Rachel Wilson for joining me, as well as all of you listening out there across the airwaves. I can't wait to bring you more funny for your ears again. So until then, be sure to visit thephilshow.com for updates and extras. Until next time, this is Phil Maki saying, You can tune a piano, but if you try to eat tuna fish out of a can while sitting at the piano, you'll probably spill fish juice all over the keys, which is really hard to clean up. Good night, everybody! Thank you.